you'll be able to know how to draw objects, that's to draw lines and rectangles, draw circles, arcs, and polygons. Now, draw with accuracy. Use object snap tracking. Uh, we treated part of this last week. Use codenet systems. We treated it last week. Make isometric drawings, which we did last week. So as I'm reading out these topics, please in the chat box, if you identify the ones that uh, we've not treated, please drop it there so that I can touch base with it. Moving further, we'll go to modify objects. At the end of this course, you'll be able to know how to move and copy objects, how to rotate and scale objects. You know, there are two different types of ways you can rotate objects in CAD. You can rotate it by, by scaling it in a paper space, or you can scale an object. You can just scale an object in your user interface, which is different from scaling your drawings in your, in your paper space. You're able to learn how to create and use arrays, how to trim and extend objects, to offset and the mirror objects, and to use grip editing to fillet and to chamfer objects. And then at the end of this course, we'll be able to learn how to use additional drawing techniques, being able to draw and edit polylines, being able to blend between objects with splines, and then apply hatches and gradients. And then you should be able to organize objects, change your object properties through your layers, alter layer assignment for objects, then control our layer visibility, and then assign properties by object or layer, and also be able to manage our layer properties. So we're able to, at the end of this course, we should be able to know how to reuse existing content, how to work with our blocks, how to manage block attributes, and how to reference external drawings and images. Then we want to know how to uh, annotate our drawings. We want to know how to add and modify text. So we've treated that, how to use our dimensions, we've done that. And uh, add and modify multi leaders. Then create, assign annotative styles, and then to use tables. And then after that, we're able to go to our layout and printing. We're able to create our layout, and use our viewpoints and set printing and plotting options. Please, once uh, we are logged out of Zoom, I'll log back in so that one of us will continue with the class. So once he logs you out, try logging back in again, please. Okay. So let us uh, focus on using additional drawing techniques and then organizing our objects. Okay, remember that we were taught that rectangles, rectangles like this, and uh, circles. They are all called polylines. And they are close polylines. We've treated how to draw polylines. What I just wanted to talk base is how to if you look at what we have here, how to edit them. How to edit them and use it 
for other things. Okay, let us go ahead and and draw a polyline. Just a simple line. Like this. Our auto is switched on, so I switched it, switch it off. Okay, now <clears throat> I've succeeded in drawing a polyline. If I select it now, we'll discover that it is a continuous line segment. It is a continuous line segment, so it's a polyline. Now, to edit it, I want to turn it into a spline. I want to turn it into a spline, so for my command line, I select edit polyline. Or I on my keyboard I will type P P edit. And it's asking me to select the polyline I want to edit. So I'll go ahead and select this uh, polyline. It brings out a drop down menu asking me what exactly do you want to do with this your polyline? Now, if I want to, if I want to increase the width of this my polyline, I'll step as I'll select double, I'll select width. If I don't want to select width on from this option, I will type W on my keyboard. Okay, let's attempt to do it, and then we we'll create, we we'll increase the the line width, and see what we will get. It's asking me now to specify new width for all line segments. Let me just say ten. Texting me again. I will just enter. Let us lose closely to see what we have created. You can see that we succeeded increasing the width of that line. But let's undo this and do something else. Okay. Now, type in that P edit again. I select the line. This drop down menu gives me an option to decide what I want to do. I want to turn this in, into a spline. So I select spline. Entered my keyboard. That same polyline that we just drew now has been converted to a spline. If you notice, when we created the polyline, it has it's a continuous line segment, but the segments are not that close together. So we can see the, the, uh, the blue boxes all around the objects telling us that we have, we, we've already selected it. So if I click on it this again, now that we've converted, converted this in, into a spline, let's see what we're going to get. If you look closely, you see that the original profile of that polyline that we drew, we, we are see, seeing them in, in an outline. But then that same polyline has been transformed into a spline now. All this is dependent on the kind of thing that you're working on on your project. If you have, or you're working on a design that has an aerodynamic shape, these are the sort of command, the kind of command that you would deploy in terms of being a, using, it, uh, using it to create the forms that you want to create in your work.
Okay. So I want us to go ahead and apply some hatches and gradients on this form that we've created here. Can you even add more? But first of all, I want to organize my user interface into what I'm most familiar with which we've been taught how to deploy. So from here, I select this, I say show menu bar. It shows my menu bar. From my menu bar, I can start configuring, can go to tools, can go to two bars, can go to AutoCAD and I can go to draw. It drops it there for me. If I right click on that draw, I will select modify. I will select layers. I will select properties. Works with the layer. But I don't want it to be on a different line. So I move it and place it here. Then I right click again and select standard. So I'll come to this place, I'll right click here. I click at this place and I will say close. Okay, my screen looks like this. So I'm comfortable to work with my screen like this. So I'll check my layers, I look for layers that are, I'll select hash. I make the hash layer the current layer. And I have spaces. Let me go, let's go to the, the a, a, a proper building so that anything we do there, it, it, it becomes natural to you to understand that this is how these things are supposed to be done. Please, once Zoom logs us out, I will log back in. So when, once I do that, join me back in, please. Okay, I'll zoom in here. Hmm. People that are logging in are coming into class late. People are disturbing us. Let's look at this here. I can delete this. I'm sure you observed what I did here. I selected this hash on my windows and then I went back to my modified toolbars to click on erase. So this is called grips editing. Grips editing. I first of all select what I want to work on, what I want to edit by gripping it, that is, I have not selected any command and I move my crosshair to a particular uh, object on my user interface and I will select it. Once I select it, it draws a blue box around that my object, that is called gripping. So once you grip it, you can edit it in different ways. Let me undo this again, so I can appreciate what we just did here. Now look at my cursor. I've not selected any command. Then I'll come to this particular uh, hash on my window. I will click on it. It means I have gripped it. I can go ahead 
and select any other command that I, I can select move, copy, erase, whatever. Any kind of transformations I want to do on this element I've, I've gripped now, I can go ahead and do it. At the same time, I can come to this small blue box here or any of these small blue box here. Or I, you will see that once I place my cursor on that blue box, it turns red. Wow. Okay. Once it's gripped, you can click on it. Then you can right click. And it gives you different options for what you can do with this particular object that you selected. You can stretch the vertex. I'm sure architecture students, when you hear vertex, you understand what, what it means from what you have been taught so far in introduction to design computing. You can add another vertex, you can remove a vertex, I can move it, I can rotate it, I can scale it, I can mirror it, I can copy it. These are the different editing options that are available to you when you use your grips editing. Remember, the first thing that we did was that we selected this particular hash. Now that I selected it, two things. I can go ahead to this person, click on erase, copy, move, um, cut, whatever, to transform this particular uh, object that, that I selected. At the same time, I can select any of the blue boxes here, click on it, and then I right click. It gives me a full options of what I can do with this particular uh, element that I selected on my user interface. That is using grips editing in your work. Okay, I want to use hash and I want to use gradient inside this um, rectangle and circle that we are looking at here. This rectangle and circle, it could be your window, it could be your door, it could be, I mean, a concrete member you want to hash, it could be an, an elevation you want to render, whatever it is. But first of all, you must have a defined boundary. You must have a defined boundary. It means it must be closed. It must be closed. Anytime you want to apply any of those functions on an object and that object is open somewhere, it will give you a, an error telling you that your valid hard boundary was not found. So, Having that at the back of your mind, each time you want to create anything, the first thing that you need to ascertain is that that particular area that I want to hatch, that I want to apply my gradient, is it completely closed? If it's not closed, then you can use your polyline as a guide. Close that particular area, apply that command, then later that guide that you use to close it, you can easily remove it if you don't want, if you don't want to still see it there. Okay. Okay, so to hatch this, I'll go here and I'll select hatch. Once I select hatch, you bring out this dialog box. You need to understand that 
anytime you're working with, with, with cards, it is always a two-way communication. You are talking to the, to the system, the system is talking back to you. So once you tell it what to do, you can, it's just like you're sending somebody to the market to buy a clothes for you. You say, okay, buy me a jean. The person will ask you now, what size of jean do you want to buy? What's the weight size? What's the length? And then what's the color? Is it white jean? Is it blue jean? Is it black jean? Is it brown jean? What's the make? So these informations means that you are communicating back and forth with that person so that the person will understand exactly what you want to do and go ahead and carry out that function for you. So that's the same thing. That's the same thing that happens anytime you're using card. You're talking to it and it's talking back to you. So now we want to hatch these two spaces that we have here. So first of all, we will decide what type of hatch we want to put inside this place. So we have the patterns, we have the ones that are predefined already, and then we have the ones that are called user-defined and uh, the ones that are custom-made, which means you can create your own. So for now, let us just use the ones that are already here. Let's try it. And as you, you, you select it, it will give you a preview of what it looks like on your screen. And then it will ask you to scale it and whether you want it to be at an angle. So for now, let's say that our scale for what we want to draw is 50. We don't want to put it at an angle now. We just select big points. We just selected big points and uh, once the once zoom logs us as please log yourself back in log back in so i'll go through the process again I'll just run through the process again now that I'm recording the class. What we started before we were logged out was we selected the hatch command and we selected this particular hatch pattern, ANS 137, and we set the scale at 50. We didn't change the angle, just selected add points i want to hash inside of this place and i want to hash inside of this place i will right click and i'll say enter and if i say okay here now it goes ahead and draws this for me and what we did then was that we we selected it without selecting any command which means we have gripped it and this particular thing we we, we did now we can place our cursor on top of it right click it gives us options of what we can do with it to edit this particular um hatch pattern now i will exit from here at the same time after selecting it like this i can come to this modify two bars and select erase once i click on erase it takes it out completely from here so i go i go back to that same command again hatch and instead of select for my hash dialog uh, drop down menu, instead of selecting add pick point, I will say add selected objects. Now, for me to use add selected object, it means I have used a polyline to define that object, which means I have a close object, an object that is a close polyline that I want to hatch the inside. You Notice my rectangle is a close polyline, so I can do that. For this rectangle and also for this circle i can do that now i'll enter you can i can preview or i can go ahead and say okay it does the same thing for us now you select it again we've gripped it we can come here and click on erase and it takes it out for us now i'll go ahead and select the same uh, hatch command and if you carry out a task by using hatch, 
By the time you click on the command again, it brings out the last one you did as the default. It brings it out as the default, which means if you want, you can continue with that, or if you don't want that, you can go ahead and edit it. So for now, what I want to edit is that this hash pattern that we created, I want it, okay, let's look at what we had before so that we can know the difference between the two of them. Let me just do it on this one alone. Look at what we have. Look at it closely. This is the default hatch pattern as it is in CAD. So you can see that the hatch pattern, look at it again. The hatch pattern is at diagonal. They are diagonal. The diagonal, if you look at it carefully, you discover that they are at 45 degrees. So if I give 45 degrees as the angle, it means that it, it, it will turn this thing to face at 90 degrees. So I'll select this. Then on this angle and scale, to set my parameters for this my heart, are in the angle I will set 45 degrees. And I'll come here, I'll select this one. Enter. Notice that the hatch pattern, the lines are at right angles now, at 90 degrees. Initially, it was at 45 degrees. So we turned it by 45 degrees again, it becomes 90 degrees. And that's why we are seeing it like this. So at any point in time, you create a hatch pattern, you can go ahead and edit it. You can go ahead and edit it. Remember when we wanted to edit our polyline, we selected P edit. So for us it, to edit our hash here now, we can say, um, edit hash. And type edit Mm. It's hash edit, hash edit instead of edit hash, hash edit. So I've selected the command I want to edit the hash. It doesn't mean to select the hash you want to edit now. So I'll select this as this one I want to edit. It brings out the dialog box again. That's what exactly do you want to do? Okay, this is my angle that is at 30 degrees. Now for 12 degrees, I want to change it to 30 degrees. Let me even look at and see what it looks like. I'll preview it. This is what it looks like. If I don't want it again, I can go ahead and select it and select uh, hash edit and then continue. But I want to also show us one simple trick now. Each time you conclude certain operations, maybe if I, you've done five steps, five other operations, and you want to go back to that particular last one that you did, you can cycle through the last command that you did by pressing your, the arrow. pressing the up arrow on your keyboard. As you keep pressing the up arrow on your keyboard, you keep going back to the most recent command that you, are, you have carried out on this system. You can see hash edit. We'll continue, we'll see hash. We'll continue, you will see that we've done erase. We we'll consider we've done undo. We've done, uh, gone to layer. We've gone to, uh, we've gone to a ribbon to close it. We've done p edit. We've done spline. So you can continue to cycle on your last commands with your up arrow on your keyboard to go back to the most recent command that you just carried out on your work. With that, it can help you to move fast to accomplish uh, things easily. 
So I'll go again. I want to erase this now. So the next command I want us to touch base here is gradients. Gradients. Your gradient can be a two color gradient. It can be a, it can be a single color gradient. Or it can be a two color gradient. So first of all, let's do a single color gradient. Let's do a single color gradient here. So each of these patterns, you can choose the exact one that you want. You can have selected this first one. I will select add pick points. I will select inside this space. Let me preview what I just did. Now, I can grip it. Click here. All right, click. Then it gives me options on things I can edit on this uh this hatch pattern that i just created now it gives me op option to change one or two things here so i just leave it now because i don't want to do anything to it i'll go ahead and select gradient again but instead of using a, a single color, I decided that I want to use two colors. Click on two colors. Let me select this one so, so that we can be able to appreciate what will appear here. But at the end of the day, please understand that once you select two colors, these default colors is what appears. But if you have an idea of the exact color that you want to choose for these two colors uh, gradient, you can click on this box beside here and then go ahead and select the colors that you want for this one. You can click on the box here also to select the colors you want for that particular one. So I'll select this as the pattern that I want and I'll say pick points. I click here. Let's preview. The particular one that we, we created. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's about being able to use your hash and your gradient command. These commands can be used for different purposes in your work. Can be used to hash your, your, your windows. It can be used to create water bodies. For example, I'll go ahead and draw some things here now on our screen. Can go ahead and draw some things that looks like this. And I'll type C to close it. So this is now a completely closed polyline. Now I've gripped it. So I pick on this vertex now. I right click. I decide what I want to do with it. If the command, okay, the commands are not here. The ones that I want to use are not here. So this is a polyline. So I type 
I will type P edit. My keyboard. I select this now. I want to turn it into a spline. So I've succeeded in creating something that looks like this. Remember, we just use spline command. I mean, uh, we just use polyline command to create this. And now we edited our polylines by converting it into a spline. Now, this shape that we have here now, we can go back to that our gradient. And they said, okay, this could be our pool. It can be the pool in your house or you are doing a design and this is the pool and maybe you want to use one color but this is your blue it's not the right blue for a pool it's not like the sky blue so you change that you can change that to some, something that will look like water at the end of the day so single color i'll just say select objects i'll do this i'll enter i'll preview it so this can be my swimming pool in a house. It can be like a swimming pool in a house. I can decide I want it, oh, I want it just to just be a single color. You can do something like this. You can create all kinds of, all kinds of effect on a project. So this, uh, For you to understand how to manipulate these tools when you're working. So with touch base, with heart, and gradient. Let us run through a simple process of changing the properties of an object and how to alter the properties you've assigned to a particular layer. Okay. Okay. Let's look at some layers and then, okay, or maybe let's just look at a floor plan and then see how we can manipulate the layers that are there. Okay, let's look at what we have here. For example, let's look at this, these chairs in this, uh, in this hall. This chair is made of a layer called furnitures. Let's, let's assume that that's the only, uh, only thing called furnitures here, but I'm sure that there might be other things that are called furnitures. Okay, so from my, from my layers drop down menu, I can select furniture, which means the furniture is the current layer now. Now, if I come to the layer properties uh, dialog box here now, I can go ahead and look for that particular element that I call furniture, the current layer, that is it. Assuming I want to change the, the color, I will select here, assuming I want it to be uh, let me say I want it to be uh, something like purple in color. I can just select that color 
and say, okay. If you look at my drawing, you see that that particular layer, the properties has changed. The properties it has changed. You can select it again. It's okay. I want it to look more brownish rather than this purple. I didn't change the line width. I didn't change the line type, but I've somehow, somehow changed part of the properties of this particular element on my work. So I'll go back and leave it to what it was originally. Can zoom in and then look at maybe, maybe, maybe my walls. Maybe my walls now. Yeah, come on. Anyone I want to edit. I'll select it and then I want to edit the color. I'll click on color here. Once I do that, it brings out this uh, color palette for me to decide exactly what I want to do. Okay, let me just say this is my, my building. Okay, let me turn the, the walls to green. For example, I'll do this. I can see that my building has changed to green. Okay. Suppose I say, okay, even, even as it is green, I want, I wish that the line weight is a little bit thicker than what it is now. Okay, let me say the line weight is 1.0, for example. This is what happens. We can see that the building has been transformed somehow. So these processes, you, uh, the things that you go through to be able to edit a layer. We can also work on the appearance of the layer. We also need to look at the appearance of the layers. We can be working as okay, this is my 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 furnitures. I don't want to see them in my project. The first thing I need to do is that I'll, I'll make sure that it, that particular one is not the current layer. So I've changed the current layer from furniture to walls. So I can go ahead to where that my furniture layer is here. I can say freeze. It had disappeared from my drawings. I'll bring it back. I can say lock. It means that you cannot erase it. You cannot move it. You cannot edit it. It's locked in position at that particular place. Then I can say, put it off. Put it off looks similar to, to, um, to freeze. But the difference between the two is that when you freeze, you've frozen all the things about that particular layer that is no longer being referenced by the, by the, uh, by the processor in your system. But when it's just switched off, it means that the processor is still assessing whatever properties that particular element has and is acting on it, is affecting your system, is calculating it. So at each point in time, you should know the exact one that will suit the operations you want to carry out. Okay. So our time is also running out again. So we'll stop here for today. Please, I would like to field your questions now.